morning, good afternoon, and good evening, viewers. Welcome once more to Requiem for London. Our scene is set tonight, not too long after the events that had just transpired to one Nora Hillingham. Perhaps a moment of triumph against one of her rivals, if such a wretched thing could be called a rival, that is. Not to mention the beginning of something new, something unexpected, something she was not, shall we say, prepared for. But such things can come by surprise and lead to very strange shores, if one knows my meaning. But nonetheless, in moments of such fundamental change, Miss Hillingham has decided to fall upon a routine, and one of her routines is going on nightly strolls. Miss Hillingham, where do you find yourself right now, at this time of the night? Nora finds herself probably walking one of the many deserted streets and alleys that she's been wanting to haunt for a couple of nights now, pretty much... There's been a lot going on in her life, as it were, and a lot that requires digesting, as it were. And so, after her business is concluded at the college, and she cleans up, dresses, goes out for a bit of a hunt, nothing spectacular, just a little nibble. Not much, actually. doesn't really feel like eating. Oh, it doesn't feel like eating that filth anyway. Um, but yes, yeah, she finds herself probably at um, probably in one of those lanes that, that you do find in just the outskirts of the city where you've got old industrial uh, revolution style buildings that are abandoned, workhouses with the wrought iron gates still, let's, shall we say, monuments to a grander era that was so very inhumane that perhaps the cost of progress was one too great to really have been paid. But still, progress was made and the modern age was born from it, so ends justify the means, perhaps. And as she's musing these thoughts, she's just wandering the streets, one foot in front of the other, her mind sort of musing languidly on these thoughts. Um, reaches into a pocket looking for a pack of cigarillos as per usual and um, yeah just wanders mm -mm. not quite yet sorry I would say it about let's say perhaps an hour into your stroll as you find yourself musing these thoughts these perhaps theories of yours, perhaps justification for what has happened, perhaps exploration of this new situation you find yourself in, you were very suddenly and immediately disturbed as even though there are no real doors present, you will just simply hear a A knocking, a knocking as though there was a door behind you. Almost like it's a door in the back of your mind. A simple knocking. It will startle you from your thoughts because it is so singularly not your thoughts. And it'll startle her also because of that nightmare she had not long ago. <laughs> but um, yeah, Nora just stops for a moment, fires a brow, just freezes. It just extends her senses a tiny bit. The fuck is going on here? While she was walking, she was feeling at ease, at peace. Almost more powerful, because she did have that victory over that motherfucker that tried to take her research. And it was actually quite entertaining to watch him die. But um, now the hackles are up again. Now she realizes that she's not alone, perhaps. But uh, yes, extending senses and seeing where we go. As she began to look around, there's not really many people on the street, maybe an odd person here or there. You'd certainly pass by several uh, homeless people on the way. Uh, the only thing that draws your attention is that there is an individual walking sort of 
not on the other side of the street, but on the same sidewalk as you are, but not on a collision course to you, just so you know. One person is walking north, another is walking south. Normally they do not pass each other, but this person is unique because they are just smiling, even as you can extend your sight with your, shall we say, heightened abilities now. See a lot farther than you can before. You can hear the heartbeat on the individual, but they're just smiling as though they're just imagining a jaunty tune, but then you hear it again, this time louder. Three knocks on a door that is not anywhere nearby, yet intimately close. Getting louder as this individual approaches. As the person walks by a street light for a brief second, you will glint rather than human eyes, bright yellow within them. Eyes that look at you, Nora Hillingham. Hmm. Hello, pet. Hello, sweet pea. How have you been these evenings? Bored. You? The same of you. I've come to deliver a message. Mm, have you? Grandfather is quite disappointed in you, Nora. You had such great promise, but now he's bored of you. You're so lucky. Now you can live a normal life. Nora just stares off, wanders off to the... Her eyes wander off to the stars. That's nice. In, Is that all? In fact, I've come to release you back into the wild, my pet. You're so dull these days, I can hardly stand it. I'd say you're doing me a favor, but was that it? This again, darling? You sing such sweet little songs, but they're just empty noise. If you're just going to sing for me whenever I show up, then I should put you in a cage so I can hear you every night. <sighs> but alas, such melodies bore me ever so much. I found more beautiful songbirds to fill my time. Well, then perhaps you should go annoy them. I figured we can at least enjoy one's company, each other's company, one last time. You know, since you gave me that very, very nice departing gift. Nora just has a bit of a squid, a bit of a narrow of the eyes at you there. And um, is there any scarring apparent? Or no? Uh, funnily enough, no. Not on this individual. Mm -hmm. This individual mm -hmm. just looks a normal, average human. Mm-hmm. In which case, uh, <laughs> Nora's mind actually goes back to the massive electrocution damage that she had not a few nights ago and just sort of looks at the individual and then looks at herself and goes, I didn't notice anything. You should really get over yourself. Ooh. Are we having a little bite? Are we raising our claws? No, your songbird is singing, but right now she just wants to go home. So if you've delivered your message, Pigeon, perhaps you should go. The smile kind of drops. I was just going to deliver my message and maybe have a nice little chat like we used to. Like we did at the hotel. And you showed me that lovely charcoal drawing of me that you showed to my other pet. But again, I grow bored. Because all you do is you raise your claws and you sing. How many people are on the street right now? Mm, indeed. Um, there is, well, you passed a homeless person about maybe like a couple blocks ago, but again, it's rather late at night.
So far as you can tell, even with your heightened senses, there's only the two of you. And it's probably not going to be the best of ideas, but Nora's actually getting pissed off. She's had enough of this game. And um, yeah, gonna lash out, because fuck you. Ooh, hoo, hoo. All right. In that case, which aspect of the beach beast are you going to use to lash out? Can I boost strength before lashing out with strength at all? I do not believe so. All right, in that, co in that case, we'll go for intelligence. All right, going for the competitive beast. Very mm -hmm. well. In that case. Can you Thank remind you me roll. of the dice roll? It's blood potency, intelligence. Yeah, That's I want it. To say, yeah, blood potency plus mm. intelligence. Emily, you are going to get a dice pool of. Ah, oh, fuck me! Nothing. You get a dice pool of seven, Emily. <laughs> okay. One second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And rolling. One. Oh, yeah. One success. That is <laughs> That's all I needed. Damn it. Enough. <laughs> okay, so, Nora, describe how you lash out using your competitive bees. <sighs> Ineffectually, considering there was no successes there, but pretty much um, Nora's had enough, so she just sort of <sighs> exhales down and um, just looks up over the rim of her glasses, giving the best freaking death stare that she can which is really more comical than anything else, considering the dice roll, and just say, you want to stay out of my way before I burn you again, bitch. And <sighs> enough, like, again, this creature just sighs at you, but then just looks at you. And as she looks at you, the light just glints at exactly the right way. Eyes, just orbs of sickening, sickening yellow glow. And she just raises an eyebrow, exactly like in that painting you made of her so prettily. And in that moment, again, it's a reminder that this creature exists on a different level than you. Mm -hmm. And you can't stand it. You now have the competitive condition. Equal to th three shadow potency. Your character must assert dominance or superiority. Either she gives it her all or she falters. Anytime she's in direct competition with another creature, she suffers a minus two to die penalty on any roll when she doesn't spend willpower. This includes contested and extended rolls, as well as any rolls to tempt or coerce her into competition. Achieves an exceptional success on a three instead of a five. The condition fades naturally, number of nights equal to her blood potency of the vampire or strix that caused it, which is three. In that case, of the predatory aura, it is um, a matter of your own blood and potency. You do get a beat, though. Actually, no. You do get a beat for getting the condition, though, so. So, hang on. What the fuck just happened? Uh, basically, you tried to tell her to piss off, and she just yeah. raised an eyebrow at you, and her beast essentially uh, bitch slapped you back, saying, No, bitch, please. <laughs> you Fair can't enough. Touch me. <laughs> All right. And it's driving you wild. Uh, it is. And uh, it's driving me so wild I'm going to have another go. Uh, I think if you I can. only lash out once per scene, unfortunately. God damn it. No, no, unfortunately, it's the raven that gets the last laugh this scene. So, um, Miss Raven, what do you do as this little thing, this little bird, just so ineffectively tried to uh, peck you? Peck you on your finger. Didn't even draw blood. Oh, little songbird, you pecked me. Now I'm going to flick you in the face. And I'm going to let the SD do a better job at, you know, the raven's maniacalness than me. Mm -hmm. um, so what exactly are you doing? No, she just kind of, like, raised her finger, like, 
you just said, like, as if the little songbird pecked her and just goes, Oh, little songbird, you pecked my finger, and now I'm going to flick you in the face. And she does. She just flicks you right in the face. <laughs> but that stills, like, absolutely, unabashedly, unashamed smirk on her face. This is going to end fucking badly. I'm going to try and bite her finger off. <laughs> All right, in that case, give me an attack roll. <sighs> and not only that, it's such a surprise that the raven doesn't even get her defense on this. Just give me a roll. So, what are we wanting? Uh, this would be brawl strength? Or? Plus, yeah, brawl. Hmm. Oh, what's the worst that can happen? success. You just bite down into this, but the raven doesn't so much as even, like, let out a scream in pain. Again, she just sort of looks at you and raises that eyebrow. I've grown quite a bit since we last sparred. In fact, here's a little taste of what I can do. And with that... Oh, go ahead, Ben. Sorry. With that, uh, she just closes her eyes and just sort of opens her mouth, and for a brief second, this gout of smoke almost. No, darkness, smoke, darkness, you can't tell, but for the brief second, you see the beats of wings, and the creature emerges into the night, and for a split second, she opens, and then she just starts screaming and looking at it, going, What are you doing? Ah! Someone, someone help! <laughs> And a voice like her entire demeanor is completely changed. This is someone who is scared, someone who is bleeding, someone who is looking at you like you're some sort of, like, savage creature. <laughs> she's looking around, she's frantically calling for help. Fucking loose ends. Good on you. Dominate, be quiet. <laughs> Roll me dominate. Single success. Yep, and only two dice for this individual. Um, in the case that she has some sort of like monumentally successful role, Emily, will you please give me those two dice? Yeah, again. Oh. One success. Oh, hello. <laughs> well, she's a defender anyway, so. Wait, no, no, that ten explodes. Remember. Oh yeah, so let me roll again. Nope, just one. Yep. So just one and one. Mm -hmm. and um, under normal circumstances, but again, you're a Ventru. In this instance, I'm going to say that since you're trying to dominate a mortal, the vampire wins in this case. This is just some person who was caught completely off guard. You just say those words and she just quiets immediately, but she still looks fearful, like she wants to scream, like she wants to run, but... In fact, she just starts to run. <laughs> you told her to be quiet, not to stand still. But again, the mesmerized condition is still in effect. Fucking humans. <laughs> her aloofness is going to get her killed, but Nora pretty much does the... the um, gladiator pose of are you not entertained and just pretty much just opens your arms to heaven and says, was that it? Yes, the human is just running away as fast as she can and uh, you actually see something circling in the sky over you silhouetted against the blackness yet of the haze over the city. You can make it out even though you can barely see the stars but you do see the smoke, the darkness, the creature hidden within the creature that is the smoke. The wing beats, the yellow eyes, and then it just flies off towards the heart of the city, leaving Nor healing him alone. You can still just barely see the human who is now running like her life depended on it, which it very well might have given Nor's mood any other day. So what is Nora 
going to do now as she just shouts towards the heavens. Humans running away. Nobody's going to believe that shit anyway. No. She's jaded beyond belief. She's aloof beyond belief at this point. She's not feeling anything other than the fact of and and potentially um, a potential lunacy in a way where she's sort of going, well, I walked away from that one and I've mouthed off at it, so whatever. I'm still I'm still not healing him, fuck you. So she'll just drop her arms from where she did her are you not entertained pose, put them on her hips, just watch the creature fly off and spit on the ground and walk off in the other direction. Not playing this game. Indeed. And you are not disturbed for the rest of your walk. You're able to return at your leisure. Any last things you do for the night? Provided not follow, go back to her new haven. If followed, shack up in somebody's place. In that case, in order to see if you were followed, that would be just a good old wits plus composure minus... Let's see, probably three here. Nope. Wouldn't know if she was being followed, so back to the haven it is. Indeed. And if that is all, that is where we can bring this scene to a close. Scenes that her winged friends had not forgotten about, nor yet. And with this cryptic taunt? Warning? None can really be sure. It looks like for certain that the frustration, the games, nor has not yet unbound herself from being the plaything of owls. And with that, we end our scene. Thank you all for watching, and have a lovely night.